Okay, let's see. Good. Okay, good morning. I'm going to do the keynote in English. And for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about the uh, project Sideprint. But before that, so brief introduction. I work at HP here in San Cugat. We have a big, a big campus in Barcelona. I'm going to mention it in a minute. Um, and uh, my role, my current role, is the director for the construction services business. So many of you probably don't associate HP with construction. You probably have in mind PCs and printers. So what I'm going to try to do over the next 15 minutes is to explain what, it's, what is HP doing in construction. And I will use this project site print, which we announced a couple of months ago, as, a, as, as it's our beachhead into this market. And I will, exp I will use also this project to talk about two topics that uh, are very important for us in the company, that are very close to my heart, and that uh, they have been very present in this project. Which, is insights, which are insights-driven innovation and entrepreneurship. Actually, I'm going to focus a lot of the talk in to how this project has been born from entrepreneurship. Yeah. So, very briefly, to provide a bit of context, we have a campus, we have a big campus uh, from HP here in San Cugat. It's actually the biggest R&D site outside of the US for HP. We have uh, close to 3,000 people, more than 700 R&D engineers and the headquarters for two businesses. The 3D printing business, it's managed from Barcelona. The large format printing business as well is managed from Barcelona. And actually, the large format printing business is the business I'm coming from. And this is the business this project was born from. Okay. So a little bit about large format. As the name indicates, it's printing big. So you can print big posters, or actually this market was born 30 years ago to print big another type of content, which are CAD drawings. Architects that started using AutoCAD in the 90s had to have a way to bring that into paper, and they started buying plotters. And HP was actually the first brand bringing plotters to the market. Normally, when you think about a plotter or a large format printer, you think about something like this. An architect in an office using the drawing for their use, to review, to share with a client, etc. And actually, two out, of three cast two out of three architects have an HP plotter in the wall, so it's very present in their offices. However, there are other places you can find them, even though they are less present, and one is this, which is construction. This is not the reason for the construction services director role, but actually, when you go to a construction site, there is one place where you find a lot of paper, a lot of drawings, which is the construction trailer, like a seta de obra, which is where the project manager, the architect, are following up the progress. In some cases, you can have a plotter in there. Okay? In many cases, you just get the paper. However, when you get out of that and you get into the dirty part of the construction site or where you have the dust and the people doing the actual work, normally you would not expect to find an HP device. You would expect to find things like this. Right? From heavy equipment to fine pieces of technology that are used by topographers, uh, by surveyors, and other specialized people in construction, but you would not expect to find a printer or a PC. And this is what, with the project I'm going to cover today, uh, we, want, we think is going to change very soon. And we'll introduce the project with a quick video, and then I'll explain a little bit about the history and how we developed it. So 
if you, I don't know how familiar you are with construction processes. If you've seen it, at least this, the easy summary would be this is a printer on wheels. It's, it's more than that, and I will explain it in a second. So how did we come up with a product like this? And by the way, this is the first marketing video. We did the announcement of this product a couple of months ago. When you look at it, it looks like this is a project that started with hundreds of people working on it and with a ton of resources. This is the opposite of what happened, actually. When we launch, we normally have, let's say, this kind of nice material coming outside, but this doesn't mean that this started as, uh, as hundreds of people working on it. Actually, this started using these two, uh, or thanks to these two methodologies uh, or approaches that I was mentioning before, which is insights-driven innovation and entrepreneurship. So, I was saying before that construction companies use paper, but not many of them have plotters, so we wanted to understand how we could go to these users of our final product, which is the paper, and help them better. There are two approaches to do that. You can ask them which kind of plotter would be better for them. Should it be cheaper? Should it be faster? Should it have a scanner? This will give you a lot of depth in the insights that you get, but it's quite narrow. The other thing that you can do is that you can just go there and for 10 weeks, which is what the team did, observe what they do with the paper, because then you are going to find out how you can help them. They did that, and they understood that they did a lot of different things with the paper, but there was one that was actually pretty painful for them, which is layout. So when you have to build a building, you prepare the terrain, you put the foundations, you create the concrete slab for the floor, and then you need to mark where the walls are going to be, you need to mark where the air ducts, the electrical installations are going to be, and the way that you do that is that you paint the lines of the cat drawing on the floor in real scale. This is called layout. I'm going to use a project that we did in Girona last year, which is a hospital floor of about 2,500 square meters. To do it, you need somebody like this person here in the picture, going to every corner of every wall with a measuring device, marking it with chalk, and then you do the line between the two corners with a line, with a, with a piece of rope and, and chalk. It's super manual. It needs to be very precise, because otherwise the wall is not built where it needs to be. And for example, this hospital floor, these 2,500 square meters, can take two people 10 days, and normally the most skilled people in the site, because you don't want to give that to somebody that's not going to get you the right position. This is very painful, because these people are very skilled, and you have them 10 days on their knees with chalk, rather than coordinating teams or doing other things that add more value. And by the way, more and more, people do not work, want to work on this. So it's hard to find new people coming into the industry doing this. By understanding this, instead of doing a plotter to print the paper faster in the construction trailer, we worked on having a robot that would print the layout directly on the job site, which was a product that did not exist. It was a new category. And that was driven by the fact that we observed what the customers did, not just what we wanted the product to be. Now, once you have this, once you have the insight and you decide that you're going to do a robot, how do you do it? So we know how to do printers. We have been doing them for 30 years. We are very good, at, I would say, at doing them. We can build project teams that are very efficient at bringing them to market. If we had given this project to one of our project teams, they would have found out that everything is different from the type of product to the technology partners, to the supply chain, to distribution. So trying to fit this into one of our current project teams would have been like trying to fit like the triangle piece into the square hole into a kid's, into a kid's game. Actually, the right way to approach something that's very new, that's very uncertain, for us is entrepreneurship. And it's easier said than done. Actually, entrepreneurship is about trying to combine the strengths of the corporation in terms of resources with, uh, with the agility of the startup. And the first thing is that you need to build a team and you need to give them a challenge. So this was a team that in an internal contest worked on having the insights and they came up with the idea, but then you had to implement it, right? And the way that we built it is we offered members of the team that wanted to work on the project to be able to stay on it, full autonomy, full dedication, with resources, direct reporting to the GM. Um, but they had to meet milestones very quickly, like a startup would do with a venture capitalist. They accepted the challenge. We had three very good engineers that took it. And their challenge was to combine the fact that they had more resources than a startup with the agility of a startup. If you don't do it intentionally, normally you end up in the opposite. You end up with the pace of a standard project in a corporation, and the lack of resources of the startup because you don't fund them so much, right? So you have to be very intentional. 
we made mistakes in the process, but we, I think that we also made some, we had some successes. And what I wanted to share in this video is how they approached it. We gave them a challenge. They took it very well. The first month, they already had a prototype that was not close to the final product. Two months after, later, they were at a customer site with an off-the-shelf robot and a rotting. It didn't work, but they learned a lot. And actually, they had customers saying, when you fix it, call me because, because I want it. Okay, but of course, today it's not working. Actually, it was not marking on the floor, so we fixed it with a bucket on top of the robot so that it would have more pressure. So it's just the kind of approach that you would not expect from our printers normally, right? Uh, and we had the first customer interested on the project, so actually we had the first customer in the funnel. Then, important, we have more engineers in the site, hundreds of them. We asked them how to help the team solve some of these challenges. And we did workshops, they came with ideas, they connected, to, they connected us to other people. And this was important. We ended up with a solution less than six months after starting that was already functional. It was not by any means the final product, but we could bring it to a customer site and the customer could say, when this is finished, this is a product for me. So in six months, they could prove all this and they could come back saying, I have customers in line. We would not have done that in a regular project. The team did it here because they had a different approach. And actually, we announced two months ago, and now, let's say the team, it's still not a massive team, but it's a team from R&D to sales that is ready to bring this to market. And we have already made quite a bit of noise in the market since we announced. And I have a couple of minutes, and I wanted to finish with the last slide. So I went very quickly through it. I'm happy to go into detail with anything that you're interested in. But as I said, we didn't get everything right from day one by any means. We had to correct some things during the process, but I think that the project is not finished, but we have been successful into getting where we are. And I have five elements or five keys to success that uh, you can find some of them in literature, but I've, we've lived how some of them are important, right? And I wanted to start the first one is that you need full commitment from the top management. This needs to be a top-down management um, uh, mandate to the organization. This team needs to have full empowerment and be protected from any temptations to compare the resources that are used into this with the resources that you use in a regular project. The level of uncertainty is much higher. The potential is much higher. If you try to compare the ROI with a standard printer at the very beginning, it's like comparing apples with peers or apples with oranges, and you're going to end up making wrong decisions. You need full commitment from the manager, which we had. You have only three people at the very beginning. You cannot start focusing on supply chain, costs, everything else. You are going to get there. The first, the first thing that you need to do is product market fit. Find the problem, find the customer who loves your solution. The rest will come later. If we were doing a printer, we would start thinking on everything from the very beginning, right? I briefly mentioned on this, you need to evaluate different based on milestones, like you would do in a startup. If you evaluate using the same ROI mm, methods that you have for bigger projects that you staff with tens or hundreds of people, you are going to kill it because you are never going to be able to have the level of certainty that these methods require. We are very good at projecting how a printer is going to do. It's very hard to say how a new concept in a new market is going to do. And last, you have a lot of resources in the organization. These people are very focused, but they need to learn how to use the ones that are useful for them, R&D know-how. You need to learn to discard the ones that are not useful. In this case, our distribution channel is very powerful. It was not helpful, so we had to discard it, even though it's good. Right? And last but not least, and the most important one, you need to have the right people at the right moment. People that in this phase will not take a no for an answer, that they will ask for forgiveness, not for permission, that they will break some rules. When you scale, you need to add other people in the mix. If you don't have that, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to break. And that was, in a nutshell, through the project, how we approach this in terms of the insights and how we implemented it. And thanks for the attention, and happy to have a chat with anyone that wants to talk a little bit more about this. Thank you.